Welcome! In this unit, we'll be reviewing your algebra and geometry skills. These are skills you've probably learned before in your high school or previous mathematics courses, but these will be specifically focusing on things that you'll need to succeed in your pre-calculus and ultimately your calculus classes. Let's begin by looking at an example of when you might need some algebra or geometry skills. Back in the 70s, there was a really popular Tootsie Pop commercial featuring an owl who asked the question, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Tootsie Pops were a little candy with a Tootsie Roll center and some coating on the outside. I brought my Tootsie Pop today. Well, this isn't actually a Tootsie Pop, it's a little bit larger, but we could ask the question, how many licks would I have to make on this lollipop to get to the candy in the center? So this is basically a math question, although it seems like a candy question. We could do an experiment. Suppose I took this Tootsie Pop, unwrapped it, and suppose I licked it for a minute, and then measured the circumference to figure out how much of the lollipop was I able to lick off in a minute. And suppose I repeat that experiment several times. So I lick it for one minute, then I lick it for another minute, and I get some data. Let's look at the data when I licked this lollipop. On this graph here, you see some blue dots. Those blue dots represent the circumference at various points in time during my experiment. As I'm licking this lollipop, I'm keeping track of the circumference at various measurements at various points in time, and I'm denoting them by a blue dot. You notice this data looks like it's sort of straight. If I was going to draw a straight line through the data, most of the data points would be pretty close to that straight line. Let's look at that. Here I've drawn a black line that pretty well fits this data. This is called the line of best fit, and it can be found using a technique called linear regression. On there, I also have an equation for the data. That black equation, y equals negative 0.34x plus 6.34, is the equation of the line of best fit. It's basically an equation for the line that goes through the data as close as possible. Well, let's talk more about what this equation represents and what sort of things we can do with it. Namely, we want to answer that question from the old Tootsie Pop commercial, how many licks does it take to finish the lollipop? Well, let's take a look at our equation. The equation that best fit my data for my experiment was y equals negative 0.34x plus 6.34. Let's pick this equation apart a little bit. The x in the equation corresponded to time. That was the x-axis or the lower axis on my figure. It basically just corresponded to different values of time for licking the lollipop. The y-axis on my diagram corresponded to circumference. So the y-value is a circumference in inches of what the current circumference is at a given time. Normally, when we look at linear equations, we put them in what we call a standard form, or one of several standard forms. In particular, my favorite standard form is the, the slope-intercept form, in which you have both the slope information of the graph, or how steep that line is, and the intercept, where does it hit the y-axis. We usually denote that as y equals mx plus b. The m corresponds to a slope, the b corresponds to the y-intercept. In this case, our slope value is negative 0.34. The units on that would be inches per minute. Basically, this slope corresponds to how much of this lollipop, how much of the circumference am I looking off in each minute? And the y-intercept, the b value of 6.34, what would that correspond to? Well, that measurement is in inches, and that corresponds to the initial circumference of my lollipop. So in this particular experiment, I had a lollipop that initially had a 6.34 inch circumference. Well, we still haven't answered the owl's question from that commercial, how many licks does it take to finish the lollipop? What information would we be wanting to look for in order to answer that question? Well, that's really asking us to find the x-intercept. We want to know what is the time value, or how long is the time, which corresponds to x, at which I'd finish the lollipop. Finishing the lollipop corresponds to y equals zero. y was our circumference value, and when I'm done with the lollipop, I should have no more left, so I'd have a circumference of zero. In order to answer this question then, I found my data, I found the line which best fit my data, and now I want to take my linear equation and solve it for the x-intercept. So I plug in y equals zero to my equation, I move all the x terms to one side, all the constant terms to the other side, and I can solve for x. And if you see by my arithmetic up here, I've gotten that it would take me 18.7 minutes to finish my lollipop, given the data that I've had. 
Obviously, my data wasn't perfect. It's not exactly a linear function. But in the real world, we very often approximate real world experiments or phenomenon with some sort of function. In this case, a linear function seemed like a good approximation to my data. Well, let's talk more about what sort of skills will you need to have in order to use algebra and geometry to study problems in pre-calculus and calculus. We're going to be dealing in this unit with four main types of functions. Those four main types are polynomials, rational functions, radical functions, and problems or functions involving absolute values. Polynomials you can think of simply as sums of powers of x. For example, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. Anytime I have a function that's a sum of those type of terms where the base is a variable, usually x, but it could be something else, and the power is an integer like 2, 3, 4, 5, those we call polynomial expressions. The formula I've written down here for a polynomial, you notice it has some strange things, a n, a n minus 1, etc. Those a's just are taking the place of any constant coefficient, just any real number, just a number there, is, and that's going to give us a polynomial. We also will talk about rational functions. Rational functions are functions made up of a numerator and a denominator, where both the numerator and denominator are polynomials. And I just told you what a polynomial was. The one stipulation is, in mathematics, we always have to be careful that we don't want to divide by zero. So with our rational functions, we'll usually make the stipulation that the denominator can't equal zero. The denominator equaling zero is not part of our domain. There's two other types of functions you'll be talking about in this unit. And that one of those is radical functions. Radical functions are things involving square roots or other type of roots, such as third roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, etc. When you deal with these, we usually denote it by that square root sign that you see in the diagram up there. And you'll realize when, you'll know when to recognize those because you'll just see that radical um, form. Finally, the last function that tends to scare students a little bit, but really isn't that scary at all, is the absolute value function. The absolute value, simply put, it's just the positive version of a number. If I put in 3, the positive version of 3 is still 3. However, if you put in negative 3, we want to switch the sign to make the positive version. So negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3, is simply 3. The equation that I've written there is the definition of absolute value. It simply says that if x is less than 0, we want to make the positive version, so I have to change the sign or take negative x. If x was already positive, I don't need to do anything when I take the absolute value of x. I simply keep the value x alone. This kind of piecewise defined function with two parts is one that you'll encounter a lot in this course. So finally, let's talk about what are you going to learn in this unit. In this unit, first and foremost, you'll learn to solve linear equations, just like we did with that lollipop problem. You'll also learn how to solve linear inequalities. Inequality is like an equation, except you'll either have a greater than, less than, or the greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to sign in the equation. For example, here I've shown you a compound inequality. We know that 5x plus 7 is less than 18, but it's also greater than or equal to 3. You'll learn how to solve things like that. Find out what values of x make this expression true. You'll also be learning how to solve inequalities involving absolute values. For example, if I tell you that the absolute value of x minus 3x is smaller than or equal to 2, you'll want to figure out what values of x make that expression true. We'll also learn how to factor polynomials. This is one of those skills that a lot of students tend to remember from high school, but will give you a refresher and remind you of those special cases that you may not always remember. Here's an example of a polynomial, x squared plus x minus 2 which I've factored or broken into the multiplication of two linear terms, x plus 2 times x minus 1. Another skill you'll be learning how to do is how to simplify and solve rational expressions. So for example, I've given you a rational expression using an inequality, and you'll learn how to solve what values of x make this rational expression, or a ratio of two polynomials, greater than or equal to 0, also known as positive. Finally, in this unit, you'll also be working with simplifying and solving expressions involving radicals. So we'll be learning the rules of how to manipulate terms within radicals to simplify the overall expression and make it easier to solve certain types of equations. What are the applications that you'll be looking at for algebra and geometry? Well, there's a lot of them. Basically, 
this section is really focused on giving you some tools and techniques to solve applications you'll be encountering in later sections. So for this particular section, we won't be focused as much on what the applications are, but on getting you some tools to solve later applications. Almost any problem I can think of in math, science, engineering, business, is going to involve some sort of polynomials or rational functions or absolute value functions. So these tools will have a wide-reaching effect. When do you use algebra? Well, algebra is going to come up pretty much any time you have some quantity you don't know, some other ones you do know, and you know a relationship between the knowns and the unknowns. Basically, you're using some known information to solve for this piece you don't know. And that's kind of a simplified definition of what algebra really is. Well, thank you, and I really hope you enjoy reviewing your algebra and geometry skills. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.